What's up guys? Welcome to the show. My name is Mark and this is Inclusive Tales. Guess what? The Lord is amazing. He has brought someone from the US to our channel. So Andrew is a pastor and uh, he'll be sharing about how he was brought up, his background, and at least we are going to interact with him and know how his life there in the US compared to Kenya. Welcome. Okay, thanks. How are you finding Kenya here in Olesereni, Nairobi? Oh, I love Kenya. Mm -hmm. I love Kenyans. Well, yeah. what, what are you enjoying mostly in Kenya? The people. The people. The amazing, just good people. Great people. Have yeah. you had a chance to go to the parks and see the animals? Uh, I have been once. I mean, this is like my sixth or seventh time to Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, I come for work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was like, a, I was a pastor for 27 years. Mm -hmm. And then I felt God calling me uh, to begin a work of training pastors. Mm -hmm. And so I began a ministry called Beautiful Gate Ministries. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Gate Ministries. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's uh, www.beautifulmin.com. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. M-I-N dot mm -hmm. com. Mm -hmm. and you can find my website. Mm -hmm. um, and so I began to come to Africa. Mm -hmm. And I pulled together a couple of teams of, of Kenyans mm -hmm. and other Africans to mm -hmm. work with me to train. Mm -hmm. And we go to places and we do... Mm -hmm. um, together with my brother's ministry, mm -hmm. Tierra Nueva. Mm -hmm. uh, we do four-day trainings, mm -hmm. three four-day trainings in mm -hmm. each place, mm -hmm. and it's powerful. So how many countries have you gone in Africa? I've been to Zimbabwe, Tanzania, mm -hmm. Uganda, mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. and Ethiopia. So between all those countries, which one do you find more beautiful and more convenient for you? Kenya. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so Kenya, we are a blessed, blessed country. Yeah. So for the times I've been in Kenya, maybe I can ask you how many hotels have you been able to go to? Like today you are in Old Sereni, last time you were away and where? Oh, well, mm. I don't know. I mean, I've been to lots of different hotels because mm. everywhere we go, mm. we have to stay in a hotel. Okay. And so usually we try to find a hotel that's inexpensive because mm. I'm on a limited budget okay. for my work. We try to balance. Yeah. Do you find life in Kenya expensive? In terms of accommodation. Life in Nairobi is expensive. Very so expensive. compared to the US or other parts of the of the world, is accommodation in Kenya more expensive or just somewhere? Accommodations, you can find less expensive accommodations in Kenya, mm -hmm. but if you want a nice hotel, mm -hmm. um, it's as or more expensive. You have to cough more money. It's more expensive than the United mm -hmm. States. Okay. And the food is more expensive. But now it's delicious and fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you enjoy meat from Kenya? Meat? Yeah, the beef, the mutton. Yeah, yeah The sure. vegetables and the fruits. The fruit is the best. The, the best. Yeah. Uh, so, Pastor, you're going to tell us about uh, where you were born, specifically. Okay. And then how was your life when you were growing up? Yeah. I know you're going to enjoy this. Okay, so... I was born um, just outside of Seattle, Washington, mm -hmm. on an island called Mercer Island. Mm -hmm. um, I had uh, three brothers and one sister. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad loved God so much, mm -hmm. and my mom passed away this last April. Oh, my dad is 90, mm -hmm. almost 94 years old right now, mm -hmm. and they just have loved God so much, and mm -hmm. they, they just said, that they just wanted their children to know and follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And and yet, you know, when I was a, a youth, mm -hmm. I believed mm -hmm. in Jesus, but I didn't mm -hmm. follow him. So yeah. when you were young, uh, what did you want to become when you grew up? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so it's not very exciting. Mm -hmm. When I was a little boy, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a garbage collector. I <laughs> That's the worst kind of job. I know. <laughs> so what was attracting you in that kind of field? I thought I'd find lots of neat things that people were threw out. Oh, you want to take the valuable. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just a little boy, you know, and and so then I wanted to be um, I wanted to be a wildlife mm -hmm. biologist. Okay. So yeah. you kept on changing. <laughs> yeah, when I when I got older, I started adding more sophisticated desires. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. and so anyway, so then I, when I graduated from high school, mm -hmm. um, I, I thought, you know, I believe in mm -hmm. Jesus. So straight from high school, you did not go to any other kind of job or field. You went straight to ministry. No, mm -hmm. I went into carpentry. Carpentry. <laughs> 
So you are more physical and interactive. Yeah, you know, I built houses. Okay. And I went to the university. Mm -hmm. And when I was on my breaks at the university, I would build houses. I also mm -hmm. cut firewood for a oh. living. Okay. So splitting the firewood by mm -hmm. hand. So you have been there. You know how it feels. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like to cut wood. So do you get some good cash when you cut fire? Because in Kenya, Pretty someone good. like here in Kenya, someone will give you one dollar for slashing like so many logs. Well, mm -hmm. it's hard to to convey the measurement, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a lot of wood. But at least um, there's, there's that, something that you cut good. for a person, mm -hmm. and and it pays okay, but it's very hard work, mm -hmm. you know. And so anyway, I did that kind of work mm -hmm. and then, but mostly it was carpentry. Mm -hmm. and, and then I went to graduate school. I went to a Bible school, mm -hmm. I went to the university, mm -hmm. and, then, and then I traveled with mm -hmm. my wife mm -hmm. through Central and South America, exploring mm -hmm. the possibility of mission work. Mm -hmm. And I felt the more I traveled. So the, your, the wife, your wife, your wife is in the same, also in the same field, your wife, she's a minister. She's a teacher. Or by profession, but she's she wasn't at that time. Oh, okay, okay. So we felt like God was saying, mm -hmm. "I want you to work in North America," mm -hmm. and so we went back to North America, and I went to graduate school mm -hmm. in theology, mm -hmm. and then I became ordained as a pastor. Mm -hmm. And um, and just before I became a pastor, my mm -hmm. wife was pregnant with our firstborn. Mm -hmm. And three weeks before I was ordained, mm -hmm. our firstborn was born and mm -hmm. she went without oxygen at birth. And she suffered profound mm -hmm. global brain damage. Mm -hmm. She had cerebral palsy, mental retardation. Mm -hmm. She was cortically blind. She mm -hmm. fed through a feeding tube. She couldn't use her arms or legs in any way. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was did how... You, did you feel like giving up because now you are here, you want to work for Jesus and they bring in sickness? Did you feel like giving up and leaving ministry? No, I didn't, um, but I was very much in grief and we were expecting God to heal our daughter. Mm -hmm. And so we prayed and prayed for her to be healed. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we prayed for 22 years for her 22 to be healed. years? 22 years. Continuously. Yeah, you know, we prayed for her to be healed. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, mm -hmm. she got sick and she died and went to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so the way that God healed her was different than what we were hoping for. Mm -hmm. But um, we felt like when God, when, when her time comes, mm -hmm. it's going to be good for her to go be with the Lord because yes. she'll get a new body. You yeah, know? Yeah. And so that was a hard thing. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that was an area where um, I had to just really trust God mm -hmm. um, and His sovereignty. So during that moment when she was sick, did you have other kids or yes? We didn't work? have any, but we ended up having two more daughters. Oh, okay. So we had... Um, um, three years later, we mm -hmm. had our second born, and then a, a year and a half after that, we had our third born. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of those girls are now married, mm -hmm. and one is a nurse and one is a teacher. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I got ordained to be a pastor mm -hmm. when I was 30 years old. You know, 30 years old. 30. So how have been your journey or through this process God have taken you up to where you are today? How have been yeah. that journey? I didn't understand the question. So how have been your journey, the journey, the process? The journey has been amazing, you mm -hmm. know. I mean, to be able to, to do the ministry of the gospel has been very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen God do amazing miracles. I've mm -hmm. seen God um, save so many people. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and yet it's also been difficult. I mean, mm -hmm. being a pastor is challenging mm -hmm. because it's a profession that it's a calling that has a lot of loneliness in it mm -hmm. because like you're the pastor mm -hmm. and everyone looks to you like mm -hmm. spiritual father you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so how do you handle your financial life because you're always on the move ministering here teaching here yeah and sometimes you find uh that people are going to minister to they're not able maybe to give you something good maybe for the truth for your hair tickets and for your accommodation so how do you how do you cater those ones how do you do it well, um, I reach out to people that have that I've known, mm -hmm. that I know, mm -hmm. and they they believe in the work that I'm doing, and they support. They send support. So mm -hmm. some people mm -hmm. might send fifty dollars, mm -hmm. or maybe they send a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. 
um, some people send more. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to just, I've been able to raise money because the training of pastors that I do in developing countries like mm -hmm. Kenya, mm -hmm. um, I want to be able to offer it at no cost. Mm -hmm. And so we provide manuals mm -hmm. at no cost. Mm -hmm. We provide lunch every day mm -hmm. during the trainings mm -hmm. at no cost. Mm -hmm. And and I pay for my teammates. Mm -hmm. I pay for, you know, I have to raise the money for travel, which is very expensive. So it's a lot of sacrifice. There is a lot of sacrifice, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that shows how beautiful and important because your message basically is all about forgiving. So it, for you, you are sacrificing so that the message can reach each and every person and also preaching the gospel to each and every corner. Yeah. There's nothing more important in the world. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing. Yeah. I mean, there's no more important decision mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. than the decision to follow Jesus with your life. And so, Pastor, you know, uh, you are a pastor, and uh, most of us, sometimes we do, people believe that pastors may be their saints. So I want to ask a question. Like, when you were growing up, when you were young, a boy, you used to go to movies, play football, have girlfriends, sometimes you fight here and there. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All of that. Have you ever outbroken a girl? Have I ever outbroken a girl? Heartbroken girl? Mm. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a girlfriend that she thought I was gonna ask her to be her she thought I was gonna propose to her. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. I broke up with her instead. <laughs> you turned that down. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was a heartbreaker for her. Mm-hmm. So, so what's next now? You have been in Kenya, so where are you going next? So I'm also a spiritual director. Mm -hmm. So that's another part of my work. Mm -hmm. I meet with people one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. to help them uh, to discern the voice of God in their life, to, mm -hmm. to help them to experience more of the presence of God and to deepen their spiritual relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so I will fly home this week, mm -hmm. and one of the things I need to do mm -hmm. is I need to do some more fundraising for my work so I can come back mm -hmm. and do more training of pastors. Mm -hmm. But I also need to uh, spread the word about the work I do with spiritual direction mm -hmm. and just build that ministry. And so those are some of the challenges I face when I go back. Okay, all right, all right. So if someone wants to get... Uh to receive some of your messages you have done in the past and the one you are doing currently, where can they find your messages? You have a website, a page? Um, I don't have them recorded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'd have to come to you for this message. On oh, the written one? Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys. Hope you have enjoyed the show. God bless you.